All right, so Colorful dropped an RTX 5050 before NVIDIA did because who needs a launch date when you've got a cat-themed graphics card? The Meow Edition, it's real. Meanwhile, NVIDIA's over here deciding GDDR6 is good enough for desktop peasants while laptops get the faster GDDR7. Yeah, that totally makes sense. Oh, and DLSS4's new Transformer model just escaped the beta because nothing screams stability like a GPU feature that's still working through some things and therapy. Let's break it all down. You guys know the drill. Let's get into it. All right, Colorful just beat NVIDIA to the punch with a cat-themed Meow RTX 5050 before the 5050 has even officially launched. Let's take a peek at this. Colorful, well-known for doing like the, the cute animal-type GPUs. It's just a very interesting choice to go with the 5050 on this, the 8 gig GDDR6 NVIDIA next-gen card. <laughs> Check it out. Uh, Colorful launches the GeForce RTX 5050 Meow graph graphics card. Look at that thing. Isn't that fun? Uh, the company launches two uh, iGame Ultra models featuring either two or three fans. These are the highest end models in the RTX 5050 lineup, and there's apparently no plan for a iGame Vulcan version. So why would they pick the 5050 as the card to feature uh, these cute, unique designs. Now, these iGame cards are available in triple fan or dual fan lengths, and they're equipped with 90 millimeter fans. We've got no specs yet on the cards uh, since they were uh, a little bit caught off guard by NVIDIA saying we're, we're gonna launch these cards in July. So no detailed photos or clock speeds available at this time, but it's gonna look something like that, which is kind of interesting. Colorful is also introducing the Colorfire Meow series. Colorfire used to be a Radeon brand, but they uh, disappeared and returned with quirky mid-range cards that Colorful was hesitant to release under its official branding, which is great if you're gonna make a, a kitty cat card. Nothing says cutting edge performance like cartoon cats and a product launch uh, that beat the actual GPU release. Colorful also has this Battle Axe series of cards. Again, two or three uh, fan cards. The Meow Edition sits above the Battle Axe though because the Battle Axe, and I didn't even know this was still a thing, the Battle Axe series is aimed at uh, internet cafes. It's not a thing here in the US, but but maybe around the world, internet cafes are, are still a thing. Truly didn't know they still existed. Apparently there's a need. Does it meow when the card reaches certain temps? Great question. Now, I talked about this in a previous video. The 5070 that MSI came out with, this Toy Story edition Buzz Lightyear card, that's a cool, cool card. The fact that it's only going to be a Taiwan exclusive though, not coming to the US, open these up. When you make cool collabs like this with interesting IP like Toy Story, big Toy Story fan, especially if you're building a system for your kids. Now I wouldn't give my kids a 5070. You will get a 5050 and you'll like it. <laughs> DLSS 4's transformer model finally exits beta, but there might be a couple of problems still. Let's dig into this. I'll tell you what's going on here. All right, so this is the DLSS transformer model from NVIDIA. They talked about this at CES this year. Um, this is essentially a replacement to CNN, not the news station. <clears throat> We're talking about convolutional neural networks. So that's what generated pixels and DLSS previously for the previous, I think about six years. Um, so that would take focused localized areas from current and previous frames and use that for the frame gen. So the CNN technology had limited context. It couldn't look at a full frame all at once. And it struggled sometimes with motion, shimmer. A lot of people talk about ghosting as well. And apparently the ceiling has been hit after that six years, NVIDIA admitted it themselves, uh, introducing DLSS transformer. Uh, so this is brand new technology that's being released. It's the same architecture that powers a lot of AI tools like ChatGPT, um, except uh, it's for video frames. The new transformer model is more advanced than CNNs. It uses twice as many variables as the previous DLSS upscaling models and no longer focuses on localized content. Instead, it processes the entire frame and evaluates the importance of each pixel, even across multiple frames. NVIDIA says the transformer model has a deeper understanding of scenes. It delivers more stable pixels, reducing shimmering and similar artifacts, less ghosting, better detail motion, smoother edges as well, and it improves ray reconstruction image quality, especially in scenes with challenging lighting. So instead of analyzing small pixel areas, the transformer model processes the whole frame at once. It cross-references multiple 
past frames and it builds a, a scene-wide understanding of what's moving and how to predict motion as well as edges. So the hope is with transformer technology, it cuts down on you know shimmering, uh, ghosting, tr ghost trails, uh, flickering edges, things like that, and boosts ray reconstruction accuracy. So you know hopefully we see better results when it comes to ray reconstruction and motion clarity, especially when you're talking about like fast moving scenes and things like that. Very important and a lot of commenters are talking about this to expect bugs. There are gonna be bugs like none other, I guarantee it. But it's the foundation of what NVIDIA is planning to build on moving forward when it comes to the DLSS technology. Now, here's someone who's actually used the new Transformer model. The fog issues are still there on this model. Surprised it leaves beta with such a small improvement. And here's a very interesting and probably somewhat true comment. Uh, yes, but if you really and fully want to use this new Transformer model, you have to buy the RTX 6000 next year. Ooh, I can't wait. Let me know what you guys think about this. Are you excited about some of these changes coming to DLSS or are we are we sick of hearing about this? Let me know down below. All right, I want you to imagine strapping a desktop RTX 5060 with GDDR7 rockets to your ROG ally. And listen, if this next story is true, mobile gaming's about to blow up. Check it out. Uh, upcoming GeForce RTX 5060 eGPU to feature Oculink and Thunderbolt 5. ETA Prime has revealed a prototype of a new external GPU solution. Unlike most existing models on the market, this one is not based on radio on technology, but instead we're talking GeForce 50 series, baby. Look at this. This is like giving your Game Boy steroids until USB 4 bottlenecks the entire thing. Let's take a look. Now we've talked before about uh, eGPUs. You know, you've got the uh, ROG RTX 5090 mobile with Thunderbolt 5, and it's got the built-in power supply and all that good stuff. Um, but Thunderbolt 5 supports up to 80 gigabytes per second bi-directional bandwidth, which is higher, obviously, than 3 or 4, or USB 4 and even faster than Oculink 64 gigabytes per second. The biggest thing with these eGPUs has always been bottlenecks, right? So like the PCIe lane bottleneck or whatever it is, it, there's always that bottleneck to where it's like, yeah, it's kind of cool, but it's just not the same as having an actual GPU inside of a system. Now this prototype that was tested by ETA is based on the 5060 GPU, uh, not the mobile version, but a desktop variant featuring 3,840 CUDA cores instead of the mobile versions 3328, making it clearly more powerful. It also supports a higher DDP of 150 watts while the mobile version's up to 115 with dynamic boost. Both configs, eight gigs of GDDR7 memory. This contrasts with ASUS's ROG eGPUs, which integrate the power supply, which is kind of fun. Additionally, there's no mention of USB Type-C power delivery support, meaning users cannot rely on a single cable for both power and data, though such a feature should be technically possible. Now, this is a great point. This is kind of piggybacking off what I was saying. The PCI bandwidth through Thunderbolt 5 and Oculink are simply not enough. It's it's all going to come down to bandwidth. That's where you're going to be capped, right? Let me know what you guys think about this eGPU technology. Is this something that's of interest to you or are we kind of a little bit too early in the process to see something that's truly intriguing at this point? Let me know. NVIDIA just told budget gamers, you know what? GDDR6 is good enough, man. While the exact same RTX 5050 in a shiny laptop gets shiny new GDDR7, how does that even make sense? Let's reason with NVIDIA here if that's even possible. Now we've talked before about the RTX 5050 using GDDR6 memory. There were early reports for the desktop version that was gonna use GDDR7, but no. And now they're making an argument for why they made such a decision. NVIDIA explains why its desktop RTX 5050 only uses GDDR6 memory instead of GDDR7, like the laptop version. NVIDIA's decision to use older GDDR6 memory with its RTX 5050 desktop GPU is taken some by surprise, given that its laptop counterpart features newer and faster GDDR7 memory. NVIDIA's director of global PR, Ben Bernardo, responded to Hardware Canucks on X, defending NVIDIA's usage of GDDR6 in the RTX 5050 desktop card, claiming GDDR7 is, quote, the best choice for laptops. You know, nothing screams that we care about gamers like giving your desktop GPU uh, last gen memory. Kind of fun. Bernardo says that the RTX 5050 presents a special case where GDDR6 is more beneficial on the desktop version and GDDR7 is more beneficial on the laptop version rather than having both powered by GDDR7. He explained that the memory types, lower thermals and greater power efficiency are why the mobile version needs that GDDR7 and the desktop doesn't at all. And here's his response uh, to the tweet. In this case, the benefits of GDDR7 are for thermals and battery life. It's crucial for 
OEM partners, and hopefully you'll see some great laptop options. And this is probably the most important line in the article. It's fair to assume that cost would also weigh into this decision. That's put lightly. It's fair to assume that cost is the only thing that maybe matters in this decision, or at least is the most important to NVIDIA. And you know, you have Ben, uh, the NVIDIA employee over here saying, you know what, it's fine, which is essentially the tech equivalent to she's got a great personality. GDDR7 has up to 40% more bandwidth and better thermal efficiency. So the laptop version is faster and cooler than the desktop one. Nice, I love that for us. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for today. Let me know, uh, are you gonna rush out and get the 50-50? It's coming out end of the July. We're gonna see lines at Micro Center. I have my doubts, but I don't have my doubts about you hitting the subscribe button and leaving a comment and a like down below. All right, guys, it's gonna do it for today. We'll see you next time.